I don't even know why I'm talking about my facial hair, but that's that's where we're at today. Friends on a Monday. Um, it's Masterpiece Monday. And just to kind of go back to the to the original motivation for these devotionals on Mondays was just to remind us of who we are. Um, one of my favorite verses in scripture is from the letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesian church. And he reminds them that we're God's masterpiece or his worksmanship that have been created anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. That uh, often we don't see ourselves the way God sees us and that uh, we're a masterpiece created new, that we're a new creation in Christ and that he's planned good things for us long ago. So an encouragement for you to enter your week expecting to find the things that God's put in front of you, even if those things are hard. Even if those things are conflict, um, as I've heard it said, life is a contact sport. And so uh, that's part of it. I, I might even retranslate it as life is a conflict sport. There's no way around it, but conflict isn't necessarily bad. In fact, healthy relationships have conflict. I think what makes it unhealthy is when we don't know how to deal with that conflict. And and so with that, I want to dive into a piece of scripture. This will be a shorter one today, I think, but it's something that I've been meditating on a lot. Um, I had read this a couple, uh, this was last week on Thursday. I had read this Romans chapter five, uh, just in my alone time, reading some scriptures and meditating on it. And then at lunch, I was with a friend, uh, another pastor friend of mine, and we were talking about just life trouble, struggles and things like that. And he said, yeah, you know, I've, I've been thinking a lot about Romans chapter 5. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay, I guess I need the reminder. And so I'm just passing along the reminder I got last week and I've really been meditating on. And, and so I'm going to read to you from Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Again, this is a, a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, first century church that was struggling both internally and externally. And he says this to them. He says, Verse 1, uh, since we have been made, made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done. Well, that's good news. We have peace with God because of Jesus' work and not because we've just been morally excellent, but because he was in our place. Verse 2, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully Look forward to sharing God's glory. Again, just rehearsing the gospel, the good news then, that actually what we have in this relationship we have with God is an undeserved privilege that Jesus made possible for us because of his work for us. Uh, therefore, we can't lose that standing because we didn't do anything to earn it. God gave it to us. And this is where I, I really want to hit the rubber hit the road for this week is in verse 3 he says, We can rejoice too. So it's also awesome that we have this relationship with God, this undeserved privilege, and we get to joyfully look forward to these times of sharing in God's glory. But then verse 3 says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Let's look at this a little bit more. Paul says that we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. If the paragraph ended there, I would not be real excited about this, because uh, first, I don't like problems, and I don't like trials, and you know what, endurance, I can problems and I don't like trials and you know what endurance I could do without that's nice and I wish I had a little more endurance but if it's at the cost of problems and trials I think uh, I'll deal with my lack of endurance um, I hate running and uh, this reminds me of running and I don't want endurance running because I hate running it's just a painful experience so no thanks but he doesn't end there he says we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. But what endurance does though, it says in verse four, endurance develops strength of character. Okay, 
Oh, I would like that actually, strength of character. So in other words, there can be joy because your trials start to build you up. You get used to the wrestlings and the, and the strugglings and actually by getting used to it, that endurance, it actually starts to shape your character. In other words, who you are when no one's looking, you, who you really are, your character is actually shaped by the trials that you've been going through. Now, it's still, oh, that's nice kind of if I care about my character, but what if I can fake it really well with people? But thankfully it doesn't end there. He says this, he says the, that endurance develops strength of character and then our character strengthens, our, we become people rather, who have confident hope of salvation. Let me go so back to the beginning. We can rejoice because when we run into problems and trials, we know they help us develop endurance. Endurance develops a strength of character, a formation of us, and the character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. That's the final thing. That's the final thing that happens within us is that we become people who have confident hope of salvation. What's that? We are people who, when we run into problems and trials in these words, have confident hope in salvation that we have by our character. We walk around with hope, confident hope that God is going to save us. That this risen one Jesus who walks with us, who is a friend of ours, that loves us, that died for us, that stays with us, that walks through us through the shadow of the valley of death, that he's going to save us. The result of the suffering is more confidence in Jesus. That's crazy. And actually, as I've been running into a lot of problems and trials myself, what I find is shocking to myself is how little trust how little confident of hope I have in Jesus to save me. I start to panic and look to what I have and how am I going to make it through this? And it reveals that, man, I, what I need strengthened is my confident hope of salvation. Actually rest in reality that Jesus is going to save me. He's both going to save me in what I'm in right now. He's going to save me from the power of sin in my life. And he's going to save me from the presence of sin one day. He's already saved me from the penalty of sin, but he's saving me currently from the power of sin and he's going to save me from the presence of sin. That's the full work of salvation. And that's what we get as we work through problems and trials with Jesus. And when we don't bail, when we don't cash out, when we don't pull our money out of the market, when we, we don't quit on ourselves or others, but when we endure through these things, our character changes and we become people who have confident hope of salvation. And what I love is how Paul ends this. He says, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. This isn't just some fickle exercise so we can say, oh, look how great. We're, 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 we have peop we're people of character. Isn't that nice? But no, we're people of character that actually have hope in a God who rescues and saves that we can point to and say, and you can have that. You can know this God that's actually with you and for you. This hope, verse 5, will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Now he continues on in Romans 5. And if you want to read that, go for it. Because then it just even gets better. Because Paul starts to write about how God saved us when we were actually enemies of his. And he's made us now friends of God. And we can rejoice in this wonderful new relationship that God gives us. But I encourage you today, if you're dealing with problems or trials, which we all seem to be in some way, shape, or form, Paul actually commends to us, we can even rejoice in this moment. Even as it smacks, or that person smacks in the face, the problem smacks in our face, we can say, oh my, okay, God, I know on the other side of this, I, I know you more, and I trust in your saving power, and I experience your saving power. And that that hope of salvation will not lead to disappointment. I want to pray and let you guys go. Father, thanks that that's the way you love us. That as Paul goes on to write, that our friendship with you is restored through the death of your son, Jesus. And while we were your enemies, you made us your friends. And now we can rejoice because you walk with us, Jesus. That we can actually not be tossed around by trial or problem, but we can we can enter in knowing that it's shaping us, 
that, that you are allowing these things into our lives to give us endurance, to shape our character, and ultimately be people that have confident hope of your saving power and are walking in the midst of that saving power. Lord, that not only saves us, but actually puts us in a place where we can effectively love and help others. So would you transform us, or would you transform me that when just crap hits the fan, I don't panic, but that I just lean into what you would have. Help us in all of that. Help us in our culture. Lead us to love the way you've loved us first, Lord, and to do the things that you planned for us long ago as we walk as your new creation. We love you because you loved us first. Amen. God bless you guys. Hope you have a good week. See you next time.